Yeah, the yes. last note in there. Mm-hmm. Well, no, we're going to do all of these.
Good evening and Merry Christmas. Welcome to our Christmas Eve service as we celebrate our Lord's birth this evening. Good to see you all here. Welcome to anybody that might be visiting, relatives, friends. We're glad that you chose to join us this evening. And those on Facebook and uh, later on YouTube, we're glad that you can join us this way too through our virtual media. Uh, we have others joining us that way. Foggy night tonight, so I appreciate you coming out. Pretty foggy coming up from Fall Creek this evening, but uh, we're all here now and we can celebrate the joyous event. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, you were supposed to pick up a number of things this evening as you came into the church. Uh, communion, little communion packets with the uh, wafer and the grape juice. Did you all get those? You're all welcome to have that. If you need a little communion packet, raise your hand and uh, Usher will bring it to you. But the little grape juice with the wafer... And then, of course, a candle, and then we're using uh, plastic communion cups to snuff out the candles tonight. Instead of blowing them out with our mouths, we're going to snuff them out with the little plastic cups. So hopefully you all have those, too. If you need something, wave your hand. Looks like you all got it. Good. Poinsettias, uh, if you have a poinsettia pick up, to pick up, you can do that after the service. Uh, pick up the ones on the floor or at the bottom of the tree. Uh, we're not going to be able to get up too far on the, on, the, on, the, on the tree up front. So take those home if you can this evening. I think that's all I have for announcements this evening. So let's begin with our Christmas greeting, responsive greeting. <clears throat> Something's not working? We're having some technical difficulties. No, it's up to we got this looks like that's up there right now, so welcome to the celebration of our Lord's birth. We come to proclaim what the angels proclaimed on the first Christmas. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to everyone. We come to witness what the shepherds witnessed on that first Christmas day. A baby, the child, the Savior, wrapped in a band of cloth and lying in a manger. We come to worship Jesus, just as the wise men worshipped him. We come to worship Christ, the Savior of us all. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now we'll have uh, the lighting of the Advent wreath. We'll do the responsive litany first. Tonight we celebrate hope fulfilled in the birth of Christ. Joy, Joy to, to the world, the Lord, the Lord has, has come. come. Tonight we celebrate the promise of peace on earth. Let, Let earth, earth receive, receive her king. king. Tonight we celebrate the joy of knowing a Savior has come. Let, Let every, every heart, heart prepare, prepare him room. room. Tonight we celebrate the love of God through Jesus Christ. Joy, joy to, to the, the world, world, the Savior, Savior reigns. reigns. And now as the children are lighting the candle, we will have the reading. Tonight, we light all five candles on this Advent wreath. As the flames gleam, we are reminded that Christ is the true light of the world. And with the Christ candle in the center, the flames of hope, peace, joy, and love burn even brighter. So it is with Christ in our hearts, we can rest in the hope of eternal life and look forward to the promised peace on earth. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. <laughs> 
And then we'll sing Away in the Manger. And if we don't have that on the PowerPoint, we have it in our hymnals. And you can look that up in your red hymnals on hymn 277, verses 1 and 3. We'll sing Away in the Manger, hymn 277 in our red hymnals. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed, the lift. I invite you to please stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who sends the word, word with angels, who is made flesh among all peoples, and who breathes peace on all the earth. Amen. In Christ, we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace. We'll take a moment of silence and prayer to name before God those sins we are aware of. Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger but slow to forgive. We have not put on love in harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. In Christ, your sins are all forgiven, and you are clothed now in peace. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn, verses 1, 2, and 3.
Let's join together now in praying the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite any children here tonight. If you want to come up and sit on the step for a children's message, I can have a little children's sermon. I don't know if we have any kids here that want to come up. A few, maybe. Yeah, maybe Riker wants to come up too, huh? Yeah. You can just have a sit, yeah, you can just sit right there on the step. That's fine. Just stretch out wherever you want to sit. <coughs> Hi, Riker. You can come up too? Yeah, you can sit with your mom if you want. <clears> hmm. <throat> well, Merry Christmas, you guys. How are you all doing? Are you excited? Yeah. Are you? How many of you open presents? tonight, this evening. And how many of you wait till tomorrow morning and open presents tomorrow? Well, maybe both, huh? Yeah. You can answer both. You can say tonight and tomorrow and maybe even the next day. Four? You have four Christmases? Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of Christmases. Do you kind of like presents? Are you excited about presents? Do you kind of check them out and see, kind of guess what you're going to get maybe? You try to figure it out? Do you sometimes guess? Do you know? Yeah? Uh-huh. Do you think the bigger the present, the better? No. Not necessarily, huh? Could you have a really good present that's small? Yeah. You could. Yeah. Bigger doesn't mean better, does it? I've got a present in my pocket, so that's pretty small, isn't it? But you know what? This present's going to be the best present of all of them. It's going to be the best and the most important present of every present you're going to get. Do you believe me? It's pretty small. But small doesn't mean, it still means it could be very good, doesn't it? Should we open up and see what's in here? What is the best present of all? And the most important present of all? Oh, look at there. I know what that is. Maybe you do too. You know what this, who this is? Yeah, that is the most important present, isn't it? Jesus is really the most important, biggest, best present we can get. God gave us his son, Jesus, who was born in a manger because God wanted to be a human being. Can you imagine that? God, the Almighty who created everything in the world, he wanted to come to earth and become a baby? <laughs> Because God wanted to know what it was like to be human. And so he became a baby who cried, needed to be fed, probably changed the diapers. But that's who God became was a baby. Yeah, because God wanted to be a human being and, and he wanted to share what we all experience in this life. The good things and the hard things. So when we have a hard time, we know that God knows what it's like. And he's with us. Because Jesus came to show us that God is always with us all of the time. In the good times and the bad times. <laughs> Check things out. Yeah. Some more candles to blow out. <laughs> all right, let's say a prayer. You guys in the congregation can help you out. I want you to repeat after me this prayer, all right? So repeat what I say along with the congregation. Dear God, thank you for the best present ever. Who is, Jesus. who is Jesus. Help us to celebrate his birth, celebrate his birth. Today, and every day. today and every day. Amen. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up here, you guys. You can go back to your seats now. <laughs> Time to go back. <laughs> yeah, you see? Time to go back. Yeah.
I invite you to please stand if you're able for our Christmas Gospel reading. The Christmas Gospel according to Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Crinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room, place for them in the inn. Now in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on, per on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn.
Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Well, it doesn't look like you're too scared. <laughs> Nobody's shaking or trembling or you're not trying to crawl under the pews. You see, every time an angel shows up in the Bible, almost every time, people are scared. And so we always have to say, don't be afraid. I don't know, I don't look that scary, I don't think. Maybe it's just a sudden appearance by a celestial being that catches them off guard. But almost every time we're bringing good news to people. We're messengers of God. That's what angels are. An angel is a messenger. And that's what I'm here tonight to do, to be a messenger, to tell the story. Probably figured out I'm an angel. My name is Gabriel. Some people get me confused with the other angel, Harold, which I think you get from a Christmas hymn, Hark the Herald Angel Sings. I don't think I look like Harold at all. I'm not sure why people get us confused. They say all angels look alike, but... I want to clear up another misconception you have. I think it comes from one of your holiday movies this time of year. It is not true that whenever a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Some of us don't even have wings. It's optional, or halos for that matter. You don't have to have wings and a halo to be an angel. In fact, you maybe have encountered an angel and you didn't know it. It could look very much like a human being. Well, I'm here to tell you my story. I mentioned my name three times in your Christmas story in St. Matthew's Gospel and St. Luke's Gospel. The fourth time I'm not mentioned by name, but I was the angel that came to the shepherds that night to give them the birth announcement. I can still remember heaven was all buzzing with excitement. We knew something big was going to happen. So I wasn't too surprised when God called me and told me he wanted me to send some messages to two people in particular. They were birth announcements. The second one surprised me quite a bit. But the first one was to old Zechariah, the priest. He and his wife Elizabeth had been praying for a child for years, and now they were way beyond childbearing years. But I came to Zechariah. You want to guess how he responded? He was terrified. I said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayers. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And you and Elizabeth are going to have a baby boy, even in your old age. And that's exactly what happened. They had a baby boy. I told them to name him John, which they did. And this was John the Baptist, who grew up and prepared the way for the Messiah, the Son of God. The second birth announcement. I was humbled and privileged to be the one to deliver this message. God had found a, a, a young, poor peasant girl named Mary that he wanted her to have his son. So I remember coming to Mary. She looked confused and perplexed, and I said, don't be afraid, Mary. Do not be afraid. For you have found favor with God. For you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be the Son of God, the Messiah. Now, you may not know that Jesus comes from the Hebrew name Joshua, which means God saves. Naturally, Mary was a little perplexed by this, and she asked, How can this be since she's a virgin? I said, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, Mary. Nothing is impossible with God. And to prove that, your relative Elizabeth is pregnant in her old age. She's six months pregnant. As an angel, I've encountered many people who resist and refuse God's activity in their lives. And I was, again, humbled and amazed by Mary's response. She said, let it be with me according to your word. 
even though she knew this would bring public shame and disgrace. She knew that she could be stoned to death. She knew that Joseph might leave her over this. She maybe didn't understand fully what it would mean to have the Messiah, what would happen to the Messiah, but she knew it would not be an easy road. And yes, she said, let it be with me according to your word. Such faith. Well, then I had to deal with Joseph, which I figured I would. Joseph, he had a hard time with this. Of course, when Mary told him she was expecting and he wasn't the father, he suspected she had been unfaithful to him. And so she, he was going to divorce her. So I came to Joseph in a dream at night. I said, Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. You will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. Thankfully, when Joseph woke up, he believed the dream. He believed I had come, and he stayed with Mary. And then we had to wait, wait for the baby. And all heaven was anticipating, looking forward to this birth, waiting. It was so hard to wait. Maybe it's been hard for you to wait, too, to celebrate this holy evening, the birth of Jesus. But finally, it did happen. I, I had a hard time watching Mary and Joseph, though, walk that 80 miles to Bethlehem. Tough journey when she was so pregnant. And then they couldn't even find a decent place to to stay. They ended up in a, a cow barn of all places. But they had the baby. The baby Jesus was born. And all heaven burst into song rejoicing. God called me in and said, I got another message for you. I, I, I need to get the birth announcement out to people. I thought, yeah, we need to tell people. I'll go tell all of the kings and royalty and all the powerful people and the, the chief priests and the religious leaders, all the very important people. And God said, no. I want you to go to some shepherds. Shepherds? Yeah. I want you to go to shepherds in their fields. They're watching their flocks tonight. I thought that was pretty strange, telling the shepherds, first of all. But who am I to question God? So, came to the shepherds at night. Guess how they reacted? They were terrified. I said, do not be afraid, for lo, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this night in the city of David a Savior, a Messiah who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And then all the heavenly hosts joined with me in praising God, singing glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth on whom God favors. The shepherds ran off and they found the baby Jesus. It was an amazing night. And the choir, our angel choir, never sound any better. But what was amazing is that this Jesus had been born, that God had become a human being of all things. That God was with us, Emmanuel. So that God would know what it's like to be human. All of our pains, our struggles, our grief, our sadness, and our joys, God knows what it's like. And God is with us. That God would choose to do that is amazing. The shepherds, or the, yeah, the shepherds had to go and tell everybody. They went and told their family and their friends, everybody they could see. Some people may not think that angels exist anymore, but I have a feeling that you've encountered an angel because sometimes angels are actually you human beings. If you've ever needed help, and all of a sudden somebody was there to help you, well, that was an angel. 
a person, a human, or maybe you were grieving or hurting or needing something or lonely, and you got that phone call or text message, and, and somebody cared right when you needed it. Or a hug when you needed a hug. You all can be angels, and you, can, and you are angels to each other, to the world, because we are here to share the good news that Jesus is born. We are here to share God's love for all people. That was one thing God told me to make clear in the announcement to the shepherds. Make sure you say this is for all people. I give you good news of great joy for all the people. God wanted to be clear that his love was for all people, no matter what country, what nationality, what race, what creed, what religion, whether people were believers or unbelievers. His love was for all people. This baby grew up, died on a cross, and was raised again on Easter morning to show God's love. So I'm recruiting you. If you don't know it, you are going to be angels, the messengers of God. Like your Christmas hymn puts it, go tell on the mountain and over the hills and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. Tell people the birth of Jesus and share the love of God with all people. You don't need wings or a halo to do that. Well, it's time for my harp lesson. I got to go. I invite you to please stand now as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our prayers of intercession. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us now pray for the church and for the world and all in need. We'll respond to each petition with the words, receive our prayer. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and new life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Love whispers to a weary world that the time for rest and restoration has come. Maintain healthy cycles of wake and sleep for all creatures, where light pollution disrupts natural rhythms and encourage new practices. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Love cries to a warring world that the time for peace is at hand. Direct those in power who make decisions on behalf of others that they may nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Merciful God. Love sings through the wails of a newborn baby. Respond to all who cry out in pain, despair, grief, or need this night. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. For Vaughn, Eric, Beth, Bob, Barb, Allie, and anyone else that we name aloud or in our hearts at this time. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Merciful God. Love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Bless new and expected parents or caregivers, especially those who are alone or afraid this night. Pour out your love upon families of every kind. Merciful God. God's ever-present love is proclaimed through the faithful who came before us. We give you thanks for Mary, John the baptizer, Elizabeth his mother, Joseph the dreamer, and all who point toward your love. Merciful God. Rejo rejoicing in your word made flesh among us. We commend these prayers to you confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. This would be our usual offering time, but we will not be passing an offering plate for safety reasons. But we will uh, have a box in the back of the church, a wooden box that, that you can put your offering in that. You can also still mail it in or use our online um, giving as an option. We thank you for your ongoing generous support for God's work through this church. We'll continue now with our offering prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, prepare us to receive the grace and truth you offer at this table and renew us in the song of your salvation. In Jesus Christ, our Savior. For those who are watching on home, you can get bread and wine or grape juice available to receive at home if you wish. <clears throat> Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when betrayed, took bread giving thanks, and he broke it and said, Remembering me, my disciples, this do. Take, eat, this my body is given for you. Then raising the cup, he gave thanks and said, this New Testament in my blood that's shed for you and for many from sin set you free. So drink of it, all of you, remembering me. Holy communion, Jesus is mine, his body and blood with the bread and the wine. We joyfully share with disciples who meet, for Christ invites us all to eat. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. I ask you to peel off the top cellophane layer and have the wafer available to take the bread. Take and eat this is the body of Christ given for you. And peel off the next foil layer. Layer. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's join together in our prayer after communion. Let us pray. We thank you, wondrous God, for Jesus, God with us in these gifts of bread and wine. As we have shared this feast of love, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This time we'll ask uh, ushers to come up and receive the candle lighting and we'll light our candles. Uh, please remember to tip the unlit candle, not the lit one, tip the unlit candle to receive the flame as you pass it down the pews. Also we'll use the uh, cups to snuff out the candles after we sing Silent Night. As we light the candles, I'll share a couple of scripture readings until our candles are lit. A reading from John 8. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And from Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all the, in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Now we will sing Silent Night.
take your cups and snuff out your candles now. I invite you to please stand for our blessing and our sending him. And now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. We sing our sending him verses 1, 2, and 4. Go tell it everywhere, Christ our Savior is born. Thanks be to God.